offering our most humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of my dear Lord. Loving sidearms to all the devotees who have gathered here tonight, we begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we have gathered today and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. On 24th April 2011 is the day when Swami left his physical form. And since then, the 24th of April is observed as the Aradhana Mahotsavam. The word Aradhana means glorifying and worshiping the God. Another meaning of the word Aradhana means uh, adoration, to adore God. And the word Mahotsavam means grand festival. On this holy Aradhana Mahotsavam, I'd like to quote Swami's words. Swami says, you and I are one. Let us pay our obeisance to Bhagwan, and may this evening be a time to reconnect, reflect, and resonate with that oneness, and further strengthen our love and gratitude for all Swami's blessings in our lives. Sai Ram. Oh, Sai Ram, to add to that, we won't be here together to share that oneness if it's not for all of you who are here. What brings you here? is that love that we have for Swami. So we'd also like to take the opportunity on behalf of Suresh and myself to thank each and every one of you who's been a part of this journey with us all and that we continue to be united and work together with love and support for each other. We thank our regional team, our office bearers, but we are all just here to serve you. These are just names. We're here to work with you, for you, and make sure that we continue with our love in this journey to be with Swami. Thank you. Now, what we'd also like to do is to pay tribute to Professor Brother Anil Kumar, who left us on the 3rd of April, merged in Swami's divine feet. As you all know, he is a much loved person, a man of great wit and charm, who, uh, who appeals to everyone from young to old and has left a mark in each and every one of our lives uh, with his just too much to talk about, but uh, we're grateful that we had him. And I would like to quote something from um, Radio Sai, and this is how it goes. With great reverence, dear sir, whoever has heard you has only loved Swami more, as those who owe a little of the depth in our love for Swami to your words, we express gratitude to you and to Swami for you. So let us continue enjoying the rest of the day, evening, celebrating the adoration, the worship of our Lord, and we'll move on to our next event to continue this. Sai Thank Ram. you, Sai Ram. So on the back of the wonderful conference that we've all just come from, um, we are excited to share um, the reflections and uh, takeaways from a few select folk that we thought to bring together. Um, so I'd like to invite our panelists to come and join us. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. So in the back of what we think was an energizing and a vibrant time that we've had, we thought it would be um, a good opportunity to perhaps kickstart this discussion but speaking uh, with uh, the two folk we have here, Sister Sai Rupa and Brother Harish, who are very um, busy and very involved in bringing that wonderful event to us. If you'd be kind enough to step us through um, what it was like um, based on the fact that, okay, the, um, it was based on Manasa Bajare, what did that mean for you? What was the planning like? What was your journey like throughout? And what reflections you could bring to share with us behind the scenes? Thank you. From behind the scenes. Sarah Manti, thank you very much. Um, we'd like to thank Swami, first of all, to, uh, for this opportunity to reflect on the recent national conference. And it's wonderful to see many of you who were there. Um, I can't believe it's been like just under a month. The weeks have just flown by. Um, I might begin by acknowledging Sister Malini, who somehow managed to get out <laughs> um, of being on the panel today, but was an um, 
equal um, and a very valued member of our core team who helped us coordinate um, the national conference. Um, when Auntie Chitra first asked me to be on this panel reflection, I think it was on the last day of the conference, I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> um, but I, it, you know, although that was my first response, and then I said, what about Harish and Melanie? And she said, they've already been asked. Uh, but I did pause and think about why it is important for us to spend time to reflect on activities. I think um, for so much of us, especially for those who are on coordinating committees or office bearers and the young adults who are all in the audience today who have spent every second day at practice since the national conference, um, we can often go from event to event within the organization um, without pausing, and it almost becomes like where, you know, we can become very good at event managing or planning events. Um, and it's not that we intend to, but sometimes the reason why it is that we do things can sometimes slip away. Um, and so I think opportunities like this makes us pause and think, you know, are these activities ultimately bringing us closer to Swami? Are they furthering us on our spiritual journey? Um, and to really set that intention in every activity that we engage in as an organization to look at what is the purpose of this organization, why did Swami set this up, um, and are we doing that in, each, in everything that we do, and is that being reflected? So with that segue, I'm going to pass it on to Brother Harish to um, talk to us about, you know, I guess, what more we thought about with the intention of the conference and intention, the theme, and the planning. Saram, everyone. Um, thank you, Swami, for this opportunity. I think, as Rupa said, um, similar for me, when Auntie Chitra asked um, and Sashi asked, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, Rupa can do all the talking. I don't want to be up here. But I think uh, reflection is so important and so profound. And um, I honestly can't tell you much of what Bishu said, much of what, much of what Auntie Karana said, because honestly, I, I didn't have the time to sit down and absorb. But the one thing that I think we can reflect on is the journey to the conference. And one thing that I distinctly remember Sairupa said to us in, in one of the early meetings is, you know, we were busy planning, you know, logistics, accommodation, this offering, SSE program, bhajans, everything. And at one point it was, where is Swami in all of this? You know, we get so busy trying to plan the run sheets, trying to plan the event, and often we, uh, Swami is just like, oh, he'll be there, I'm sure he'll make it, I'm sure he'll come along. But do we genuinely make the intention uh, to really think about where Swami fits in? And at that point, we made um, a really important decision that we wanted to start every day by hearing from Swami. Swami would be our keynote speaker. You know, in, in the lead up to the conference, the biggest question we got asked was, who was the guest speaker? And I think for us, the real guest speaker at the conference was Swami. Um, he gave the keynote addresses. He started the day. He ended every. Uh, comp he ended the conference, um, and he was um, the best guest at our conference. I think so. Um, I think that yeah, that yeah. was really really important. Um, that sense of uh, Swami first, Swami Swami before anything else. Um, yeah. And in terms of your work together. I think that came out, the unity. Yeah, yes, Nancy. I think um, I mean, in terms of the, because people again, at the end of the conference can be like, oh, how did you feel, et cetera. And I think the strongest sentiment that stood out to me um, was, and I, I think I mentioned this to Harish and Mali in our little debrief session, that I truly felt like the conference was best expressed in my feeling, that the sum was greater than its parts. Um, and by that I mean, I mean, no doubt you can imagine that the number of hands and the number of people involved in various aspects of the conference um, that was required, everything from logistics, transport, many people who are here today, SSE program, catering, um, program, guest speakers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and everyone, you know, rolled up their sleeves, um, did what was needed to be done to make the conference what it needed to be and what Swami wanted it. Um, but the strong sense, the feeling was that everyone had that sense of collective ownership, but not doership. And that was the lesson that I took away from being part of the conference team. And um, by that I mean, I think the, in the attitude in which people worked or working within the organization, it's, you know, we want our program to, you know, be successful. We want people to feel like they've been fed and we want every, everything that we do, uh, we want Swami to feel 
pleased. Um, you know, no matter how small or the task is, really putting that effort in and the attention to the detail does matter, but ultimately realizing that, you know, it's not I or that sense of ownership. And if we can take that into everything that we do in, within the organization, I always think the organization is a bit of a playground in that what I mean is that hopefully if we practice enough of this mentality with the activities within this space, safe space of the spiritual um, like-minded seekers, that by natural extension, this will then lead into our own lives, that sort of same mentality of putting the effort in, but not feeling that, oh, I'm doing it. Um, I think my one final point is really to say that the one uniting force, the reason why we're all here today, the reason why we con continually show up, is ultimately Swami and Swami's yes. love. Um, and, you know, he truly adds value to our events, but ultimately he adds value to our lives. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And Harish, any closing comments there? Or? Um, yeah, I, I think just, just on what Sarupa said, I think uh, we, we just before the conference, we had a final dry run, and it was on Zoom. Um, and I don't think we really foresaw how many people were part of the organizing team for this conference. Um, we had some incredible team leads, and honestly, they took ownership of their area, they rallied people together, and by the end of it, there was probably like 10 to 15% of attendees were part of the organizing committee. That's how big it got, and we just had no idea. And this is, this is what Swami can do. You know, this isn't any, as Rupa said, there's no I, there's no one person you can identify who made that team what it was. Um, but that's the love and that's the unity that Swami can bring. And it's only he that does that. And thank you for that. And I think the one thing that you brought us all, or in the conference that we all did together, was the Pada Puja that we offered to Swami, that each and every one of us participated to give glory to him, right? I think that was very beautiful as well. So thank you for that. Wonderful. We'll then move on to our youngest member, Pradayani. So Pradayani has been with SSC since the age four, right up to a good 12, 13, 14 years. And uh, Pradayani, what, what, were, what were your feelings? What was your takeaway? What do you cherish most about your experiences at the conference? Sorry thank to you, you all. Um, thank you, Swami, for this opportunity. So I was lucky enough to participate in the SSSSE program. And the biggest memory that I have taken in my final year of participating in any of this was the moments that I had with each individual as a participant, um, especially being part of group three and four. We were very lucky enough to spend time with each other, learning about Swami's life and just enjoying each other's. And the biggest memory that I ever had was playing Bhajan and Thakshri with all of us. I think that was a core part of what I did in SSE, and the play was definitely a moment to remember, as it's probably my final play that I would participate as an SSE child. So I was, for those of you who don't know, I was the dad. So I know, I was quite memorable in that sense. Um, so I think participating in that play was a learning curve as you learn about Swami and within the play, there was scenes that actually happened in Swami's life as well. And putting that into perspective was amazing to see as you get more of an intimate knowledge of the play as well and what Swami went through. So that's definitely a moment that I would forever cherish. Wonderful, thank you. Um, if we would move on to Sister Revati. Thank you. So Sister Revati hails from Kerala, has been with us here in Australia since 2018. Yes, 2018. Um, and this was her first conference. But Sister Revati is actually is an alumni of the Balvikas uh, from Kerala. So she's got loads of experience performing before Swami. So let's hear what she has to say. Thank you. Sairam. My loving pranams at Swami's lotus feet and loving Sairams to all of you, dear brothers and sisters. The last time I was addressing so many brothers and sisters was in 2017 at the National Sri Satya Sai Balvikas Alumni Conference in Puttaparthi. And Swami blessed me with a lot of opportunities to be a part of offerings and do arati and all of that. And at the back of my mind, I realized, I was asking Swami, Swami, you're giving me too much this time, isn't it? Are you up to something? 
And soon enough, I realized Swami was blessing me before embarking on a journey, a new journey to a new country with my husband and newborn. So after that, there was quite a bit of grief and complaining to Swami. So this is why you were doing what you did back then. And, but I must say, attending this first conference here in Australia. It was not only the first conference that I've attended here, but also the first one as a parent. And I had my reservation registering my little one, and Auntie Saraswati reassured me, saying that there's a parallel SSE program, so while the parents are getting their spiritual cups filled, the kids are going to have a nice time with Swami too. And they did. My son did ask me if he can sneak in an SSE drop-off today as well. So that was something. And I must say that Swami's omnipresence was just so palpable. And I remember talking to him, asking him, Swami, isn't this the same vibrations I felt at Parthi that I'm feeling here today? And all the questions I had within me, all the unrest I had within me all these years were put to rest when I attended the conference those three days here. It was like coming back home, celebrating with Swami, watching everyone float around in bliss. <laughs> One person here, all Thai brothers and sisters, you know, instruments of Swami just working in unison with each other like a well-oiled machine. And who can do that but Swami? So it was definitely a pressure, pleasure being a part of the conference. It was healing, recharging, and Swami got us all you know, leveled up to get back to our spots and continue with his work. And I realized no matter where you are, you are never far away from Swami. We have the Sai family everywhere, little beads strung together by the love we all share for Swami. And my takeaway from the conference would be Swami's reminder that our inner eyes, we have to open our inner eyes to seek him, find him, and be him, Sai Ram. Thank you so much. That was very powerful, very powerful indeed. Um, in the interest of time, we'll move on to a very um, wise um, senior member of our organization, Brother Sushil. Um, very excited to hear your thoughts, sir, on uh, how the conference was. Thank you. Offering my love and gratitude to the lotus feet of my dear mother and father, loving Sairam to everyone. Dear sister, you have made me old tonight. <laughs> Nevertheless, you're right. I've had something like 30 years being in the Seifold, and uh, being present in many conferences since then, till, till this date. And uh, it has been an eye-opener for me in many situations, meeting so many people every day. And as a participant, sitting in one chair next to Brother Murali, and uh, just <laughs> trying to absorb everything that had happened that particular day, and then going home at 9 o'clock. I've had some varied experiences, which I think I had to make a note of that, because at this age, right you might be able to forget a few things. <laughs> we wouldn't want to miss out on your pearls of wisdom. Thank you. For the Sai National Conference 2024, it was a spiritual awakening that made me feel like I was coming back to life and to myself. Returning to the ultimate truth. The conference reinforced the awareness within me of the reality that I am part of the divine, the Atma Swarupa. To me, it has been a call to uncover the true meaning and purpose of life. I feel recharged, peaceful, and full of joy. Both the guest speakers, Sister Karuna and Brother Bishu, brought home the message, God for love, for love for God. And knowing that truth, one of us 
that all of us is that divine Atma. For that, we all know that God is present in everyone in the form of consciousness. In actual fact, God is neither distant nor distinct from you. It is all within us. God in me and the God in you is the same. For me and probably for many attending the 2024 Science National Conference, the messages of the conference were a call to a uh, higher consciousness within each of us to realize the inherent divinity. I feel the thirst for more to know Swami and his teachings and a deeper level. It is a constant lifelong journey to go deeper and deeper into Swami's teachings, which will make the path to reaching him easier. Lastly, this conference gave us the golden opportunity to reunite again as many brothers and sisters from interstate whom we hadn't met for the last five years due to the pandemic. This reunion was a fellowship, and fellowship indeed, a gift of God's love to bring out the human values within each one of us and continue practicing them thereafter. Prem se bolo, anand se bolo, jay jay sai ram. Dear brothers and sisters and children, Om Shri Sai Ram. And sister, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share some of my reflections of the conference, Sai Ram. Thank you very much, brother. And finally, on to Brother Sanjay. And you all would know Brother Sanjay, very busy, mostly in the background, but he's, he's got his finger in a lot of pies. <laughs> so brother, over to you. Sayam, everyone, and first and foremost, my humble pranams at Swami's Divine Lotus Feet. Um, I just want to say, whilst I was not a lot in the program in this conference, it was really, really amazing to see the teamwork, you know, how everyone just chipped in uh, from the organizing committee to the people in the kitchen, uh, people at the help desk. It was really, the teamwork was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and my role in this conference was to organize the transport arrangements for the interstate devotees and also uh, the service activity on Sunday. So, you know, we assembled 600 birthing kits. There were 100 uh, Narayana Seva packs which have gone to uh, needy families uh, at uh, the Noble Park Primary School and also there was Vibhuti packing as well. So. That was the service component of the conference. Um, and then we, the things which I've sort of learned and absorbed from, I guess, the conference and service activities generally is that, you know, service and devotion really go hand in hand. So um, when we go to, when we sit for bhajans, we focus on Swami and we connect to Swami through our prayers. When we do service activities, we focus on Swami and we connect to Him through our actions. So that is really the key to it all. And then whilst we put in a little bit of effort, you know, Swami really takes care of everything else. So once again, just relating some of this back to the conference. Um, when we were trying to organize all the airport pickups, it was a bit of a struggle at, at, the, at the beginning because everyone was involved with some component or the other of the conference. And then all of a sudden, all these people who are not even coming to the conference were all volunteered to help us out. And then when it was time to start planning all the trips back, um, one of the New South Wales youth came up to me and said, you know what, we've got spare capacity on the bus because they've taken a bus to the conference from Sydney. And you know, they, were, they said we can take 20 or 25 people, do a detour to the airport, and then head straight to Sydney from there. So that kind of took care of seven, six or seven cars for me, so that was absolutely awesome. <laughs> and, and the story behind this bus as well is that they had hired a bus for 30 people, but the bus at the last minute broke down, and, and you know, the bus company sent a larger bus, you know, which, which could accommodate around about 60 people. So that's where the spare capacity came. Wow. So, you know, whilst we think we are doing all the work and action and everything, really, Swami is busy 
work, working it all out for us, you know, and, and putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. So, you know, as I say, I can only sort of express my gratitude to Swami for how he made this all happen. <laughs> Um, I think that's my bell, but that's really the main no. uh, crux of the conference for me. Thanks very much. And in your role as well um, in service, I know we just wanted to very quickly touch on some of the service activities that have been covered. You would like yes. to step Yes, so some of that. the service activities, I'll just so I can. So uh, there are obviously a lot more service activities than what, we are, than what we can talk about today, but just some, you know, in case to encourage people to, to participate uh, in service. So firstly, we have the meal services, you know, at Dandenong Market, Victoria Market, and even Melton. So you know, a lot of these are actually growing uh, with a lot of needy people out there. So amazing work done. And please, you know, do contact your service coordinators if you want to participate. The next one is the Prema Taru. So, you know, globally, we are aiming to plant 10 million trees. Australia, there is 50,000 trees. And, you know, in Victoria, generally, the tree planting season commences in winter. So, you know, over the next few months, uh, there will be some announcements as we start getting these service activities organized. And then just one more. Um, as you all would have seen, there was a liquid love uh, or a blood donation uh, booth out at the front of the program this morning, or this evening. And um, if you would like to participate in blood donation, you know, you can register at your own time, at your own convenience. But we do request that you just register under the team code, you know, Sri Satya Sai Global Council Australia, so that we can track the donations and we know how much as a community we are con contributing towards um, the, the blood donation. So that will help save lives. It's a very important service activity. Thank Sorry. you very much. Thank you very much. My humble gratitude and thanks to Swami for allowing all you dear souls to share your stories with us. Thank you. And I think if anything, this has just, you know, augmented the fact that um, if I could summarize a few things that were shared here is we should all work in unity and love with no thought of doership, to leave it all to Swami, to look within ourselves, to get that direction, have full faith, know that we're all one and divine. And we understand that the very heartbeat of this organization is service, and we have so much opportunities to help and share. And this time of unrest and disorder in the whole world, I think there's so much we can all do as a community as well. So let's just keep being out there, serving, loving, and working together. Thank you so very much. Sairam.
is the macrocosmos, Brahmanda. The individual being is the microcosmos, Pindanda. But the basic truth of both is one, the same. That one is independent and unrelated to any other fact or thing. When that one is realized in this manner, it can be called Brahman. When it enters the awareness as the universe, it is referred to as Universal Absolute Brahman, Para Brahman. The basic truth of the universe is Atma. The basic truth of the individual is also Atma. All that appear different from Atma are of the region of delusion, Mithya. Delusion implies a condition that until inquiry appears real, but on inquiry is known to be unreal. It is only an appearance, this universe and its supposed basis, an appearance caused by ignorance, maya. The power that deludes us into believing that the created cosmos is true and real is also an emanation from the Atma. When this power operates and the Atma is clothed with it, it is referred to as the Supreme Self, Paramatma. Yeah, I think you 
spiritual practice and that truth and to bless the devotees with that bliss the attributeless supreme lord incarnates in this world assuming name and form and gives scope for all embodied beings to have concrete experience and joy through these experiences the incarnations facilitate the realization that the Supreme Lord, Paramatma, is the universal soul, Sarvahantaryami, and all-pervasive. The inner Atma of everything in creation. Lord Krishna showed the entire creation his own form. Even Arjuna failed to understand that Krishna was the universal soul until he saw with his own eyes how Lord Krishna contained the entire creation in his gross form. Love, lover, and the loved, all three are one and the same. Without love, there can be no lover. Even if they are both love and the lover, without the loved, love has no function at all. In all three, love is the chief ingredient. That which is saturated chiefly and uniformly in everything. That is the Supreme Lord, Paramatma. So there is no difference between these three. In all three, Love, Brema, is discernible as the universal soul. So can't it be realized that everything is the embodiment of the Lord, Paramatva Swarupa? Certainly, it can be realized without fail. Yes. 
of time or space for the establishment of oneself in the contemplation of the omnipresent Lord. There is nothing like a holy place or a special time for this. Wherever the mind revels in contemplation of the divine, that is the holy place. Whenever it does so, that is the auspicious moment. Then and there, one must meditate on the Lord. That is why it has been announced already before. For meditation on God, there is no fixed time or place. When and where the mind so desires, then and there is the time and place. Nakala niyamo yatra, na deshasya stalasya cha, Yatrasya Ramate Chittam Tatra Dhyanena Kevalam The world can achieve prosperity through disciplined souls whose hearts are pure and who represent the salt of the earth. In the attempt to promote the welfare of the world, from this very minute, 
everyone should pray for the advent of such men, should try to deserve the blessings of the great, and should try to forget the sufferings of the day. love. Meditate on him as truth, as love. It is possible to realize him in whatever form you meditate upon. Be always in the good company, satsang, of his devotees. Through this good company, discrimination and renunciation, Veka and Vairagya will be implanted and increased. These will strengthen the spirit and endow you with inner peace. Your mind will then merge. 
emerge in God.
నరులపై ప్రీతివాత్సల్య పరతోడ వారి స్థాయికి దైవంబు వచ్చు భువికి స్వామి మీరు ఏమైనా జరగండి ఎటువంటి పెద్ద జరగండి కానీ పుట్టబత్తి మాత్రం వదలకూడదు అన్నారు అప్పుడు నేను ఆమెకు మాట ఇచ్చాను నేను భగవాన్ ప్రామిస్ నేను పుట్టబత్తిని వదలను ఐ విల్ నెవర్ లీవ్ పుట్టబర్తి నేను ఇక్కడే ఉంటాను ఐ విల్ స్టే హియర్ పర్మనెంట్లీ ఈ విధమైన ప్రమాణం చేయటం చేతనే నేను ఈనాటి వరకు పుట్టబర్తి వదలలేదు బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రామిస్ గివెన్ టు ద మదర్ బై భగవాన్ టిల్ దిస్ డే హి డిడ్ నాట్ లీవ్ పుట్టబర్తి ఎవరైనా సరే ఇక్కడ రావాల్సిందే కానీ నేను ఎక్కడికి పోయి స్థిరంగా నివాసం చేసేదేదో ఎనీ వన్ ఫర్ దట్ మ్యాటర్ విల్ హావ్ టు కమ్ టు దిస్ ప్లేస్ భగవాన్ విల్ నెవర్ గో ఎనీవేర్ కనుకని ప్రతి దానికి కూడా అవతార తత్వం అంటే పుట్టిన స్థానాన్ని వదలకూడదు అవతార్ దేర్ ఆఫ్ అవతార్ ఈస్ టు స్టే దేర్ వేర్ ద బర్త్ హెస్ టేకింగ్ ప్లేస్ ఇక్కడ ఉన్నటువంటి చెట్టుని తీసి ఇంకో దగ్గర నాటితే అక్కడ కొంతకాలం చావచ్చును బతకవచ్చును ఇఫ్ యూ రిమూవ్ ది గ్రోయింగ్ ప్లాంట్ హియర్ ట్రాన్స్ ప్లాంట్ ఇట్ సమ్వేర్ ఇట్ మే గ్రో అప్ సాయి బాబా దని అక్కడ ఇక్కడ పుట్టి ఉంటే ఇది బతికేటువంటిది కాదు సో ది సచ్చ సాయి బాబా ఇస్ నాట్ విల్లింగ్ టు బి షిఫ్టెడ్ ఎక్కడ పుట్టిందో అక్కడనే పెరగాలి ఇది this incarnation grows where it is born karuga deenni vadalakokunda ee naati varaku kudanu ee puttabartini pedda chetranga jaagutu vachindi this puttabarti has become a pilgrim center because bhagwan continue to stay here
Yeah. 